JoePags.com, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, email. It's all right there. Plus the live video feed. It's the Joe Pags Show. Glad to have you along for the ride. Really glad to have this young lady on. It is uh, Lacey Kestisher, and uh, you are a student where? I go to Binghamton University in of upstate course you do. New York. Yeah, I think they were on in Binghamton, to be honest with you. I think my show airs there. Excellent. All right, uh, good to have you. Good to talk to you. And I got to tell you, I went and I stalked your Twitter page. And um, I guess the cover photo is you speaking with the president behind you, like nodding approvingly. What the heck was that, Lacey? Now, when did this happen? And and how many people were you in front of suddenly? Well, that was at Turning Point USA's um, Student Action Summit back in December of 2019. So I went through a really big protest on my campus. I got surrounded by 200 protesters. Oh, wow. And then a few days later, Art Laffer was our guest speaker. And the pro- same protesters shut him down about a minute into his speech. And he's Trump's economic advisor. And what do you know? I go to this event and I get a call from the White House. <laughs> and a few days later, I'm standing on the stage with the president uh, living my dream. It's something that I went through a lot with the protests and that entire situation and having people targeting me all the time. Yeah. And in the end, it worked out well. But it went through a lot to get there. Well, if you get some time with the president, that always works out. Yeah, Art Laffer was also the economics guy for Reagan, and uh, he's a really, really smart guy. I've had him on the program. And, and, yeah, shouting him down just means we're afraid of the truth you're about to tell. Same thing with you. We're afraid that you're going to be able to tell us something else's reality other than the reality in which we're living. Uh, by the way, she's a correspondent with CampusReform.org. CampusReform.org. Go there every day and check out these great stories these young reporters uncover every day. So you get a call from the White House, which, first of all, you're like, yeah, right, it's the White House. Come on. I mean, did you, did you believe him? Right away? No, definitely not. So I was actually <laughs> leaving my house because I had a sports practice. So I get a call from the White House, and I'm really confused. I'm, who is this? And, you know, I, I wasn't going to respond to the message. I'm thinking in my head, you know, maybe this is something, considering that Art Laffer came to our campus. So I just kind of played along with it, and I called them back. And is this the real White House? And yes, it is. Uh, when they started to ask for my social security number, I was like, okay, I think I think this is legitimate a little <laughs> bit. I, I don't think they're lying to me. So I went along with it. And, and what did they say? They said the president would like to have you as a guest. I mean, what exactly did they say to you at that point? It's actually pretty funny because it's called the Student Action Summit and also known as SAS. But I wasn't exactly sure what it was, even though I was going to this event. So yeah. I was thinking that maybe it'd be in a few months' time or something. And then what do I know? They're telling me. Yeah, in a few days, if you just want to speak on stage, the president might call you up. Uh, we'll see. He kind of goes off the record sometimes when he when he's talking, obviously. It doesn't right. always stay in the script. And it basically went like that. I mean, they were just saying there's a 50-50 shot if he calls you up, if you want to go up. But no paper, nothing. Just memorize the speech and just go from there. Uh, great, great, great opportunity. I'm glad you did it. So how long did you speak? Just a few minutes or what? It was actually 30 seconds around, a little bit over. <laughs> they, they wanted to keep us at 30 seconds. Uh, I, I kind of was rambling for a little bit longer because uh, that, that moment's incredible. Yeah. I mean, I've never spoken in front of a crowd that large. I went from about 30 people to 5,000 people on that Damn. day and the entire internet and everyone. So just being able to stand next to somebody who I look up to so much, being yeah. by the president, it's it's uh, really a moment that I can't forget. And if I spoke a little bit longer, I don't think he minded. I mean, he, he waited a few minutes for me to get up onto that stage. Right. Well, funny. It took me about two minutes to going through <laughs> going through the security, obviously, but yeah. it happened. Well, good on you. I'm glad that that happened to you. It is, uh, again, Lacey Kestisher. She is a correspondent from campusreform.org. Um, you obviously are filled with American pride. So am I, my family, and many people that I surround myself with, or my, myself with, and many people who take the time to listen to my program every day. But young people about your age who are being indoctrinated by these professors, far left-wing professors, 12 to 1, liberal to conservative, they don't have that American pride the way that we would expect they should. How low is it and why? It is at 20% right now. Young Americans ranging from 18 to 29. And ultimately, I think it's because we see the college campuses pushing this narrative that America is inherently racist. That's an entire lie. America was founded off the belief that you can come here and make the life that you want. Right. That you can escape religious prosecution. That is why the founders came here initially. And what we're seeing from college campuses is the narrative that we're racist, that we're based off bigotry. And that's an entire lie. 
why don't they go to the socialist nations? Why don't they go see what's happening in Venezuela or China where they're censored? Right. They couldn't speak out about the president like we see them doing online. There is some horrid things being said about him. People make death threats towards the president every single day and they get right. away with it. And if you were to go to a nation like that, you couldn't say anything. So you see college professors pushing this narrative that maybe capitalism's evil, that that's the reason why this entire nation faces some of its difficulties, which is, it's not in accordance with history. It doesn't go with anything that we're founded on, but college students are brainwashed and they just they just believe it, even if they're told it, because they don't know what else. Do we have the opportunity to change their minds? Because these are still young minds that I think are open to both sides, and both sides are presented. Many times they're not presented. Are they open to change their minds? Are they open to hear about how... You know, the first slave owner was a, was a black person in America about how there were black masters and plantation owners that were fighting for the Confederacy in the Civil War, that it's not all black people were slaves and all slaves were black people. The fact is the slave trade was a huge thing globally. It has a lot to do with, with Portugal, has a lot to do with African tribal chiefs selling their own people. It has a lot to do with the, the uh, Muslim race or the Muslim religion, to be honest with you. None of that's being taught. Are these people open to hearing the truth or not? I'll be honest, I wish I could say that they were, but based off my, no, my own experiences, I would say no. Wow. The, what we see going on online, especially, if you say one point of view, you could get attacked. It's the mob just comes for you, essentially. You say one thing that doesn't stick in line. For example, there's been professors that have spoken out about Black Lives Matter, and you see the entire university coming for them. I don't think a lot of college students are willing to hear the facts. And even if you present them to them and give them an actual source that maybe they'll believe that isn't Fox News or Heritage Institute, yeah. they won't they won't believe it still. So I think that we're almost to a point where it's just the two sides can't even interact. And it's quite scary, honestly, especially when you go into the college campuses. And if you wear even an American flag, you'll get looks. You can't even raise a Blue Lives Matter flag, it'll probably get torn down and ripped by somebody. You see students getting assaulted. That's really where we've gone to. And they can't even, I mean, you basically see the inflation with silence is violence. And if you speak, then it's also violence. So where people stand nowadays, it's really a question. And I just don't think we have that dialogue anymore. And by the way, they hide behind the First Amendment, yet you and I can't have the First Amendment because we should be shouted down because it's all called hate speech, which really isn't a thing. It is uh, Lacey Kestisher. She is, um, am I saying it right, Lacey? I am, right? Kestisher. Yes, same. Um, a, a great student over at, at Binghamton. And by the way, uh, uh, an excellent reporter over on campusreform.org. Go and make sure that you read these stories these young reporters do every day. John Jay Professor says, rip down those statues. That's okay. Let's get them out of here. Fill me in. Yes, so Aaron Thompson teaches art crime at John Jay College. I'm sorry, art crime? Is that what you said? Yes. She what is, is the art only, crime? She's the only full-time professor, and it's the deliberate destruction of our cultural heritage. So she makes the argument that throughout history, as you've seen with the Greeks, they would make their statues out of bronze. So you could take it down, you could remold the bronze. And then she ties that into present day, how a lot of the Confederate statues are also made out of bronze. And it's just something, in her own words, she says that it's normal to destroy this property. The destruction, the looting. She says that this is just something typical. We're tearing down white supremacy. And we're attacking and humiliating the idea. We're not just letting it stay there. We have to humiliate it. We have to get rid of it. Yeah. And through getting their frustration out on illegally tearing down these statues, that's how... That's how we can productively fight anything that's wrong in our society. It's that's literally how- against the law. She's literally telling her students, go and break the law. It is a federal crime. In fact, the president just signed a paper last week, 10 years in prison if, if you're found guilty of tearing down these, these historic um, statues. Yet she thinks it's morally right, therefore let's do it. Yes, that's the argument that she's making. She says that people are so upset that they can just tear them down. And that's really scary because I think it leads into the bigger picture with cancel culture, where it's first we're going to start off with the Confederate statues. Immediately, we're going to go to Washington, Columbus, and it just goes on from there. And what do you know? Now we're at Jesus even. it's yeah. It just keeps on going. It's where do you stop? You give the left an inch, they take a foot. It's in the wider culture. You say one thing wrong, you do one thing wrong in your life, then you lose the entire leftist standard. And it's entirely impossible to live up to that because people make mistakes. And 
they feel like tearing it down would just be a productive way, but obviously that's against the law and now people will be facing criminal punishment, but still they advocate for this because it's the idea that you could tear down history and just get rid of it if you don't agree with someone. If it's even a little bit offensive, minorly offensive, you don't like it, go ahead, tear it down. And, and, and offensive, by the way, is, is very subjective. It's not objective at all. I can be offended by something you're not. So so the word offensive that they always use really isn't a word that applies because it's subjective. It's Lacey Kestisher. One, one last one from campusreform.org. OU and OSU are renaming a sports rivalry. What was it called and what are they changing it to? So it was previously called the Civil War. But now they're, they might be deciding on a name. They haven't come to terms yet. But apparently they're discussing it. So we'll see what their new name for the sports rivalry is. But apparently uh, calling it the Civil War would perpetuate slavery. And words can have misconstrued meanings. What? So, exactly. No, no, I want to make sure I understand. This football game that's been called the Civil War forever is now suddenly promoting slavery? What what were they doing in the opening of the game? Were they somehow promoting enslaving people, or were they having a football game? I don't remember any because I think I'd find pictures or video of this if they were like, "Yeah, slavery is great." Because I don't think that happened. I think what they were saying was it's us against them, and we're a crosstown rivalries, and we're from the same state, and this is a civil war of sorts that we're gonna have this football game. How stupid is that? Yes. Yeah, so basically, the professors were saying, and the administrators of the sports department, that even just. It might not refer to the actual Civil War, but it has Uh. too much of a close meaning to it. And we have to create an inclusive environment. And using the term Uh. Civil War itself is not allowed. So my question is for these these administrators is where do you stop? Are we going to stop teaching? You don't. There there is no stopping. That, that's the, I mean, honestly, that, Lacey, that's the answer. I, I made this point yesterday. The New York Times wrote some big, long article about how racist the Mount Rushmore is. And my, my response on Twitter was, you know, the New, York, the, the, the New York Times wrote that article in English. All the slave owners spoke English. Are they perpetuating slavery by writing this article? That's how stupid it is. So when you say, where, where will it end? It won't unless we make it end. And I think having conversations like this will, will get us there. Yes, for sure. I I mean, we see the colleges, they're just going farther and farther left. And even right now, more speech codes are being enacted, especially in terms of COVID now. Uh, You can't even use terms like Kung Flu, for example, as the president used in his recent speech. He gets a lot of hate for saying that. But really what I wonder with this university especially is if you can't use the term civil war, how do you teach the history? Do we just forget the history because it's offensive? It's a great point. it's we're just triggering people apparently it's a microaggression where do you draw that line and i always say you give the left an inch they take a foot every single thing that we give them it's just taking away from our rights and i hope this ends soon but unfortunately we're losing the culture war right now the conservatives are and if we step up i think we can definitely turn it around but until then we just see ourselves going into the leftist narrative especially with politicians even coming out saying Oh, it's okay to take down that statue. It's not okay to take down any of these. It's not okay. Could not agree with you more. Lacey, I appreciate it. Uh, Let's do this again very soon. Lacey Kestisher from uh, campusreform.org. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, back after this in the Joe Pag Show. Stay right here.